Hi, I'm Kathleen Stone, Director of Curriculum and Instructional Design at SUNY Empire State College. And I'm here today with Kim Russell, a student at SUNY Empire State College. And Kim, thank you first for joining me to talk about accessibility. Um, could you just introduce yourself a little bit and tell us you know, about your background? Yes, um, thank you for having me. I'm Kim Russell, I'm from New Orleans, Louisiana. And I am a Phi Theta Kappa chapter advisor at Delgado. And um, one of my main um, characteristics that I have about myself, if you don't look at me and you don't know it, but I'm legally blind. I have an inherited eye disease, which is called Star Gods. It's the juvenile stage of macular degeneration. And I was not diagnosed properly with a disease until I was 25 years old. But I've been legally considered having poor vision since conception. It's in, with me an inherited eye disease. All right, well, thank you for that, that introduction. Now, I know that you are a student here at Empire State College mm -hmm. through our Center for Distance Learning, yes. which is why you're able to live in Louisiana and yes. attend a New York State College. Yes. Um, could you help me understand a little bit of how you have to use the computer to help you learn? Well, I call the computer my extra appendage. Um, I, have, I use the computer in several ways. I have a program called Zoom Text, which is a large print magnification program. It also has speech. Um, but I find there is another speech program on my computer. I have 8.1 Windows. And with this program that's built into this uh, system, I hit Shift-Alt-A. And it will read the document as long as it's in the Word uh, document pro profile. Once, if it's in another program, it will not read it. So a lot of times, if it's not in there, say for an email or something else, a link I have to go to, I have to copy and paste it, put it into Word, then I'm able to use the reader. And it really is a lifesaver. I find it works better than some of the books that are on CD, the uh, electronic format. And a lot of my books that I get from Empire, because being associated with the Disability Services Office, they send me the books and it's in Word, and that's one way I can read the books. And it mm. makes life very easy when it's in that kind of format. Yeah, I think that's really important. And it, um, I, it actually goes along with another question they had for you, and that was why is it, why is it important for um, faculty when they're designing their courses, whether they're online or another modality, mm -hmm. why is it important for them to provide um, information in multiple formats, in different formats? Um, so for you, it sounds mm -hmm. like using Microsoft Word is really effective. Right. Um, are there other uh, formats do you think that would be beneficial for yourself or for other students? Or you know, could you just kind of talk about, about that sort of design aspect of a course? I think, from what I understand, the online courses are just generalized for the general population and they're not taken into consideration. The students that do have some sort of disability or even students that may not be able to see color contrast. So that might be one way of looking at and to see how their courses are designed. Maybe, you know, if they went as a student on the course, because I'm not sure how it is for the student, I mean the teacher professor side, to see how it is on the student side. And maybe if they signed up for their course and took it along with the students, then they can see if there's errors in there, if it's easy for them to read, is it user-friendly, because sometimes you may run across something that may not be user-friendly, um, especially if there's pictures on there, because if you have to do pictures, sometimes the readers won't pick up the pictures, and they may stop, and then the student, if they're totally blind, then they won't be able to, okay, they're not gonna be able to know what's there, mm -hmm. and it may stop, or it may just stop totally to where it won't pick up anything at all, and that kind of hinders a student if they're um, diligent with their studies and they're trying to keep up with their studies as well and you run into these obstacles it kind of discourages the student so if you know if it was to where they could do it a little bit easier or I'm not saying change their modalities totally but just be a little more self-conscious of getting out there and checking with the other professors and say hey do you have a student in your class that may have uh, ADD or ADHD, or do you have a concern of a student saying, I have a hard time seeing the different colors on the modalities? 
just asking questions from their colleagues would also help them help their students. Right. So for you, and again, Microsoft Word works really well. Have you found any other um, technologies that maybe have been problematic for you that have caused uh, lots of headaches or made your learning difficult? Um, I kind of stick with the Zoom text, and that's mm -hmm. a little, that isn't like, um, when something doesn't work right, I always go back to my Zoom text. So that's my fallback. That's my default. Um, if sometimes you could put the reader on, but because of where I work, I really can't put the readers on because of the Privacy Act. But if I'm home and I need to do something, if I'm looking at it, I'll try with the Zoom text reader if need be. But nine out of 10 times, it doesn't come out as clear as the Windows 8.1 reader does. And it's just a simple task you have to do, just hit Shift-Alt-A, make sure the cursor's at the beginning of the document, and it's, you know, it goes along. And it's really interesting because if you hit the space bar, you can stop right where you are. And then you hit Enter to continue, and if once you finish using what you do with the document, you just hit Escape, and it just goes back to regular screen. So it, it sounds like there's a lot of, um, practice and experimentation yes. that you have to go through. Yes. And, and it sounds like it also depends on, on the, how that content has been created and, and how yes. you have to access it yes. to not only help you figure out which technology you would use to then access that content, mm -hmm. um, but also just in, um, in how, how that faculty member might want to go about in, in delivering that content. So a lot of considerations that need to yes. be made. Mm -hmm. um, are, the, are there similar types of considerations for how you represent what you know? So in assessments, and is there a way that, so if you're, if you're trying to show I've learned this and you've got to complete an assignment or uh, a quiz, do you encounter anything in, in that piece of your learning experiences that is challenging or is it similar yes. to the same? If it's like a, even though we do online courses at Cine Empire, I know sometimes they may have a face-to-face -face, um, course. Mm -hmm. And if a student is handed a quiz, for say, and they can't read regular print, then they're going to have to have a reader. And then they're going to have to do, take the quiz at a testing center um, because they may not be able to read it with the handheld magnifier because if they did that, then it would be hard for them to go back and find where they need to put the answer or they have to do it on a separate sheet of paper and just, and it's kind of cumbersome at times because when you get, you may lose your place where you are because of going back and forth. And if the test can only be taken in say 30 minutes, you're gonna take 15 just trying to get the first couple questions read and then you're gonna have to try to make sure you number them properly to answer those questions on another paper. Mm -hmm. So if there's a reader around that would help, um, Luckily, with everything I've had so far, I've just had to do papers and projects. And um, writing the papers, and it, 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 that expands your mind, too. So it's another way of doing assessments. And that way, because sometimes just doing a quiz, you're only regurgitating exactly what you just learned. But doing the papers, you're able to use what you've learned, plus uh, go beyond what you've learned and do comparisons and, and contrasts with that. And that kind of helps. I think that's a really great point. So um, I think if we consider how we're not just uh, delivering our content, but how we're letting students identify or show for mm -hmm. us how they've learned, you know, if, if they've learned that, there's multiple ways that they can go about demonstrating that. Yes. And so perhaps we need to look at um, how, how we are designing our assessments as well as how we are designing our content to make sure that it's meeting the needs of all learners, right. um, providing options, that sort of thing. And I've been on both spectrums, the traditional college side as well as SUNY with the papers. And this was a whole new way for me to learn, which I really do enjoy because I'm able to express myself more of what I've learned other than just doing a multiple choice mm. type or a fill in the blank type test. And because a lot of students, they only learn what they need for that given moment. And then if you've learned something before, you just as long as you cite your work, you can still add it in and it always goes through. Right, right. 
Um, if you had a chance to just talk with faculty, is there anything that you can think of that you would really want them to know about um, teaching and working with students with disabilities? Well, I think one thing is if they know the student is disabled, ask them themselves, the student, and work with the student because sometimes the student may know exactly what would help them mm -hmm. before, uh, rather than have someone say, this is what I've come up with, you can do it this way. And it may not be able to help that student. Um, another way of looking at it is if you're able to be person in person, then you can sit down with that student and then let the student show you how they study or what type of things help them to get their studies done. And sometimes it can open up a whole new door for the professor if they've never dealt with a student before with a disability. It will give them the awareness that if another professor comes and asks them, if a student has, they may have a student in their class may have the same type of disability as the other professor student does, that will help them then they can just have like a, a support group for professors who do work with um, students with disabilities. So that way they can see how they can help students as a whole, not just feeling like they're the only one that has a, a disabled student in their course. Because there's a lot of individuals who do have disabilities who could be in courses, but they're not as, uh, I guess you say, have a voice to let them know how things work for them. So it's like one of those give and take type situations. Okay. Is there anything else that you can think of that you would want to uh, let people know before we end our, our conversation today? I think just, I'm trying to, how much should I put this? Make sure that you're aware of all your students that are in your class, whether they have a disability or not, because there may be a certain study habit that another student has that may help a disabled student. And even the disabled student may have a study habit that could help a non-disabled student. So it's like a little community within the courses so that way they can help each other learn. That's excellent advice. Mm -hmm. I think that is all, it, it would help us go a long way, I think, yes. to making sure that we're serving all of our students. Yes. Yeah. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for thank joining you. me today. Thank you. I all really right. am honored to be here. Thank you.